Good morning and welcome to St John's Church Online as we celebrate the second Sunday in Advent. Relax your body, open your mind, engage your spirit, for this is our time together with God. Prepare for worship. Dulcie and Archie are lighting the candles for the second week in Advent. By now, we're getting ready for Christmas. We're putting decorations up in our houses, preparing exciting food to share with our families. The second candle on the Advent wreath is lighted for John the Baptist, who came to help everybody get ready for Christ's coming. But he said that they needed to ask God to make them good so that they were ready for Jesus to come. So let's try to be extra kind and good this Christmas. So let us pray. Light the candles for me and you. Loving God, as we join in worship, we don't know who else is here worshipping with us. And so we just pray that all those wanting to praise you today will find a place where they can sing for joy. We pray that all those wanting to unburden their hearts to you will find a quiet space to speak with you. We pray that all those hoping to find comfort in you may receive peace. We pray that all those needing new direction on their journey may be given guidance just for the next step to take. For you are our God, our help and our light, and we come before you in faith, in hope and in love now. Amen. And we invite you to join with us now in singing the Calypso Carol, See Him Lying on a Bed of Straw. Oh 
Hello, um, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce uh, the first of three nativities. Um, this one's a bit different, um, it's run by the place. So this, this one is this week and we've got two next week. Come back for them, they are going to be um, unforgettable, um, as is this one. Um, we've got the place, um, the, the youth group that's been running since the beginning of lockdown. So full credit to the leaders that have been running that and to the, the young people that have been coming week in, week out, tirelessly encouraging us as leaders as well. Um, it's been a, a fantastic group for everyone. Um, so I give you um, Mary and Joseph, the shepherds and the kings, all reacting to the news that they've got to travel. So um, over to them. tomorrow and we've got to share them the next week. Hang on a second, you just sat through that and that's all you've taken from it. That we need to look after sheep, don't you think this is slightly more important than anything we've ever experienced? But we had so much planned. I know, but come on, we've been asked along to the birth of the Messiah and you're worried about the sheep, they'll be fine. They can grow their coats out a little longer and they won't run out of food. We'll be back before they've even noticed. But we haven't even prepared. It's just down there. If you don't want to come with us, then stay here. But me and the others are going. You can wait for us to return if you want. I don't want to be on my own. Well, come on then. Plans don't always turn out how you think. We've been given this opportunity and we need to make the most of it. Enjoy the experience. Embrace the change. Just this once. Okay. Good evening everyone. I've called this meeting today to discuss the star we have all witnessed. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. We must see where this leads. Stars do not just suddenly appear in the sky. This must signify a great event. We must be there to document this wonderful event. Let us pack our bags and leave without further delay. I'm not so sure. Have we definitely not documented this star before? It's never been plotted to date. We must track it. It draws us to a place of great importance. We need to take precautions and take further measures. We don't want to rush into this. But Casper, we cannot delay. We must leave with great haste. We need to stay, take a step back here. Where could this star lead us? We have no idea how far we need to travel and what we need to take with us. We can move town to town. We will be able to take on supplies and ensure our camels are well stocked. And what do we tell our families? That we have a journey of great importance that could change the course of history and we want to be there to witness it. And what if we find some kind of ruler? We can't turn up without some kind of gift. I have some gold to offer. I shall bring frankincense. All I've got is myrrh. That will be perfect. We shall not arrive empty handed. Come, collect your things, put your plans aside and let us see where this star shall lead us. Mary, a census has been called. We must. We have been told to leave at once. Joseph, what's wrong? We must leave to register in Bethlehem, where in Judea, where my family are from. Augustus Caesar has called a census and we must get on the road as soon as possible. That will seek at least five days of travel. I'm too far along in the pregnancy. I can't walk that far. How are we going to get there? I have borrowed a donkey to carry on. I'll walk alongside. But how will we manage? I'm really worried. And we have so little money and we'll need at least two weeks to get to Bethlehem as we have to register and leave enough time for you to rest. Then Nathaniel has just commissioned a new beautiful table to be carved. This was going to provide for the baby. Will we be okay? I'm not sure, but we have to do this. I'm scared my family won't be there to support us. What happens if we have the baby before we arrive? We must trust that God is with us. I'm as scared as you are. We must pack our bags and leave at once. Is this in the plan? It must be. I just need to trust that this is the right thing to do. 
But it's not long till the baby arrives and we must enjoy these last moments we have with just the two of us. Come, let's go. Good morning, St John's. Today we're thinking about angels and in particular, anyone who's been a real angel in our life and helped us to find God or just helped us through really difficult times. So the idea today is that having made our angel, we then write the name of the person on it and we make a second angel to give to someone else in the hope that that might help them through a difficult time or help them to find God in their life. So you've had a template sent to you this week and I've cut mine out, stuck it on card already. And you'll notice that it's got the black lines for folding and the little dotted lines for cutting. When I'm using a template, I don't like that side to show, so I always fold it the other way. So fold on those so that they're hidden inside, and then it will just stand up with the arms forwards. And as you can see, popped a little face on there, just using a gold pen. That's a really, really simple one with the template. Another one you might like to do is just using a paper plate. And you literally cut a quarter out of your plate. You turn it round the other way. And I'm just using double-sided sticky tape to make it quicker. And you then stick the triangle as it's like the body with the wings behind. And then cut out a little circular face to stick on there. And hang a string on the back. And you'll have a lovely hanging angel as well. Really simple really effective anyone in the family can make it this one here little pleated angel she's made using a piece of a4 paper that's been concertina pleated and a half sheet of a4 that's been concertina pleated on the short side you then fold those in half and fix the edge that it opens up like a fan do the same with the little one on top of it they're pulling it out, make a fan, join them together, and then a little face as well, stuck. Those. And my last angel here, I think probably my favourite of them today as well, and also really simple, cardboard tube and half a paper plate, piece of tissue paper, cocktail stick, and a silver bauble. And all I've done there is I've rolled the tissue paper round the tube and tuck the ends in, so no glue involved there. Then from your half paper plate, cut a triangle out like that to make the wings. They then just fit on the back. And again, I fitted it with double-sided tape. You'll notice I pinched the top in just to make it a little bit more of a neck shape. And then the bauble is just fixed onto a cocktail stick and simply dropped. So another really effective Christmas angel that anyone in the family could make. So have fun making your angels. Hope you find inspiration with who to give it to and what message to write for them. And we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye bye. Come from the glory, he comes
John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. So, what do you use for your to-do lists? I've tried lots of ways. The old-fashioned spiral notebook. The Filofax. Remember that new wonderful invention where you could keep your present list, your Christmas card list, your project list, your finances. I've even got a map of the London Underground in mine. Then there were the post-it notes where you could write down something you needed to remember and stick it up somewhere. The trouble was then they tended to unstick and come floating down, so your room was a mess of brightly coloured scraps of paper, on one of which was written, tidy up the post-it notes. Then there was the wipe-clean board that you could write things down and rub them off. And now, of course, you can just store everything on your phone. This is the season of the to-do list, isn't it? Lots of presents to buy, lists of cards to send, lists of food to buy and bake, lists of people to contact, lists of jobs to do to make the house look festive. And it is good, isn't it? It is good to be organised. It gives us a feeling of being in control of our lives. As Shirley Conran said, you feel so virtuous as you tick each job off the list. You feel virtuous, she said, just making the list and doing nothing. But of course, we do know, don't we, that the feeling of being in control of life as we brandish our to-do list for tomorrow is to a certain extent an illusion. We prepare our list for tomorrow, maybe even with a timetable. I'll do this at eight o'clock, this at nine o'clock and so on. But all it takes is for us to wake up with a headache or feeling sick or just plain bad-tempered, what they used to call getting out of bed the wrong side. And the to-do list is, shall we say, looking vulnerable. And then let someone really annoy us, or let there be a traffic jam, or let the delivery on which our day's work depends fail to arrive, and the to-do list is doomed. It's in the bin, virtual or real. And if you add to this the more serious crises which life throws up, the breakdown of a relationship, being sent home from school for two weeks because someone's tested COVID positive, being told you're losing your job, facing a serious illness, and I mean all the to-do lists are right out of the window. Which is why, like most of you, I suspect, I seem to have spent the best part of 2020 writing to-do lists, only to tear them all up again. Funnily enough, though, I found myself understanding John the Baptist a whole lot better this year. And John the Baptist isn't an easy person to understand. I mean, he didn't do to-do lists because he didn't have anything to do a to-do list with. He lived in the desert, probably in a cave, he ate whatever he could find to eat. Wild honey, which sounds quite nice, and locusts, which don't. He wore rough clothes made from the skins of animals, and he was a wandering preacher. 
So he had no shopping lists or DIY lists or even a timetable. Basically, his life was prayer followed by preaching, followed by more prayer, followed by more preaching, repeat, repeat indefinitely. John the Baptist's lifestyle isn't mine, but think for a moment about what he was saying in his message. He was telling people that they needed to get themselves ready because someone incredibly important sent from God was on the way. And John made it clear that God wasn't so much interested in lavish decorations and wonderful music and perfectly organised worship as he was in seeing goodness and justice and peace and faith. And the people listened to John the Baptist. They took on board what he said. They came to him asking for baptism, that kind of ritual washing which symbolised their desire to turn their lives around and make significant changes in the kind of people they were. Elsewhere in the Gospels we hear John suggesting a few practical things such as not cheating in business, not bullying if you were in a position of power. And this was all good stuff, wasn't it? I mean, no matter how much we love our church and how much we're missing its usual Christmas worship, we know that what really matters to God is how we live out our lives day by day. And yes, we would like to celebrate the coming of Jesus by becoming better, kinder and more faithful people. But isn't this taking us straight back? To the to-do list? Only this time it sounds more like a list of New Year resolutions. Number one, I will tell my partner I love them at least once a day. Number two, I will not shout at my children when they are getting on my nerves. Number three, I will stand up for the people who are being bullied at work. Number four, I will write more messages to my MP about peace and justice and ecology. Number five, I will try to talk nicely to that bad-tempered man at the bus stop. But again, it won't be long, will it? Before your partner has several bad hair days in a row, your children keep fighting each other over the last piece of cake, the bad-tempered man at the bus stop makes a rude gesture when you try to talk, and all this combined with incredible pressure at work or a bad cold which might or might not be COVID, and the New Year resolutions are out of the window. What's changed? So yeah, Jesus may be on his way, but I don't want to see him any more than he wants to see me because I just make a mess of everything. John tells his people that while he baptises them with water, the one who is coming will baptise them with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That's not literal fire, but in their tradition, a sign of the real presence of God. And I think because John comes across as speaking quite forcefully, it almost sounds like a threat. Wait till your father gets home. Jesus is coming. Hide. But it's not a threat. It's a promise. And it's a promise that's going to make all the difference in the world to us. You see, change, real change, has to start on the inside. No amount of good resolutions on paper or on the phone will change us. We need a power to transform us from within. John the Baptist had that kind of power. He'd given his life to a totally dedicated ministry. And when he saw that the coming of Jesus would mean the diminishing of his own influence and following, he took this on board graciously sending his most loyal supporters away to follow Jesus instead of him. That's not easy for such a public figure as John was. And then, when the king of the land openly flouted the laws of the nation, John boldly spoke out against him, knowing full well that his own life was on the line. Pain, loneliness... Hardship, fear, all those things which play havoc with our good resolutions had little or no power over John. 
His strength came from deep within. And couldn't we all do with some of that strength right now? But this, John promised, is precisely what Jesus Christ will do for us. As the Son of God, he can transform us from the inside with the power of God's own spirit. So that strength and courage, faith and hope, love and grace remain in us no matter what's happening on the outside. And this is why Jesus Christ is called our Saviour. And do you realise what this means? It means that the crucial to-do list isn't ours. It's Christ's. It's not we who have to keep struggling to be as good as we think Jesus wants us to be, but Jesus who comes to us asking, what is it that you want me to do for you? I'd like to show you a little exercise we used to do before meeting for solace, that time of silent worship in church on a Tuesday evening. Chris Foston used to place a dish of glass pebbles in front of us and invite us to take two or three as a symbol of whatever was particularly bugging us that we needed to set aside. We'd take the pebbles in our hands, hold them quietly for a few moments, offering them to God, and then we would place them in a box and Chris would shut the lid as a sign that we were leaving all this with God for him to deal with. You might like to try that you later. It's a good exercise for prayer. Jesus asks, what is it you want me to do for you? So what's scaring you most right now? Bring him that fear. What's causing you the most stress? Bring him that weariness. What's bugging you with dark thoughts and doubts? Tell him what you're thinking. What's hurt you and is still hurting you? Bring him that pain. Which mistakes keep haunting you? Be honest with him about that guilt. What do you most need to take place in you in order to live as a child of light, even in a dark and difficult world? Ask him to make it happen. John the Baptist was right, wasn't he? The one coming after him, Jesus Christ, would bring the power of the Holy Spirit into our lives. And so the to-do list for that inner renewal we so desperately need should be in Christ's hand and not in ours. And maybe the only resolution for us left to make right now is to hand it over. Trust him to get on with it. And may we learn what it means to say, Jesus is my saviour. Amen. Good morning, St John's. Well, here we are on the second Sunday in Advent and Christmas is almost upon us. 
and we may have even have received the best Christmas present ever and the rollout of a vaccine against COVID-19. I hope you have all tuned into our Advent calendar and been opening it each day. There are some wonderful treats in store for you, but no chocolates, I'm afraid. We will be back in church next Sunday, 13th of December. So remember to book through Eventbrite. The lines will be open from noon today and close at 5pm next Saturday. If you can make it, we look forward to seeing you in church. Anne Chatters have been instrumental in setting up a weekly prayer ministry online. So if you'd like to be part of this, please speak or email Anne directly. Those are all notices for this week. Now we are to celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion and we invite all who wish to join us. You will need some bread or biscuits and a little wine or juice. We gather in the name of Jesus Christ who said, I am the bread of life. All who come to me shall never be hungry and all who believe in me shall never be thirsty. Anyone who comes to me, I shall not turn away. We read in the Bible that Jesus, on the night he was arrested, sat at table with his disciples. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and shared it among them, saying, Take and eat this, for my body will be broken for you. Do this to remember me. Then he poured a cup of wine and passed it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this cup is a new covenant with God, which will be sealed in the shedding of my blood. Do this to remember me. And now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and following his example, we take this bread and this wine and give thanks to God. Let us pray. Out of the richness of the world and from its poverty, we bring gifts to you, God, the Creator. We bring bread. Thank you, God, for bread, for a harvest which did not fail, for the hands which worked it, the money to buy it. We bring bread to make the sign for body. We bring wine. Thank you, God, for wine, for vines which grew and bore fruit, for hands which made it and money to buy it, we bring wine to make the sign for blood. We bring ourselves. Thank you, God, for life, for the work of creation trusted to women and men, for the bodies which shaped and carried our bodies. We bring ourselves to make the sign for love. Blessed are you. Forever. Jesus Christ of Bethlehem and Nazareth and Calvary, come and be born in us today. Enter our lives with your Holy Spirit. Cleanse all weariness, pain, fear, guilt, and doubt. Come, be born in us and make us whole. Jesus of the manger and the inn, Jesus of the workshop and the temple, Jesus of the lakeside and the city, Jesus of the fireside and the roadside, come and be born in our world today. We pray for the people who are keeping our streets moving, our shops selling, those walking in the corridors of power, those gathering in places of worship, those working in our hospitals and in the laboratories, creating and perfecting the vaccine. Grant all these your people strength, wisdom, encouragement. Come and be born in these your children. Jesus of Mary and Joseph, Jesus of shepherds and angels, Jesus of children and animals, Jesus of fishermen and priests, 
Jesus of women and men disciples, Jesus of tax collectors and prostitutes, Jesus of all who will receive you. Come and be born in your people today. We bring to you those who are poor and struggling to survive. Families who are under tremendous strain. Those who are losing their jobs. Those who are turning to crime. Faith communities struggling and coming close to despair. Anyone known to us today who needs a prayer said for them now. Come, Lord Jesus, and be born in these your children. Look and see, Lord Jesus. We have brought ourselves, our flesh and blood, to be your body for you. Look and see, the same spirit which lived in your flesh is living in your people here. Look at us and let us see you. And as we eat and drink in your name, renew us in joyful faith, in hopeful expectation, in unquenchable love, so that we may be your living body in our world. Come and be born in us today. Amen. People of God, here is your sign. Christ is here in bread and wine. So eat this bread, for it is the bread of heaven. Drink this cup. It is the cup of salvation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Joyful shepherds proclaim him as Lord. Let not the promised Son remain a stranger in reverent worship. May Christ your adore.
Hold your light out to the world and let people of all nations feel the warmth of God's love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and those you love this day and always.